about the Tampa Bay real estate market like we are every Sunday at 10 a.m. right here on WFLA News. Excited this week to talk about a thriving real estate market in the holidays. Uh, kind of a surprise um, surge in the real estate market. I've got Robert Johnson, the president of the Duncan Duo team at LPT Realty with me today. And we're going to talk about mortgage rates. We're going to talk about uh, real estate careers. If you're thinking about a career change or thinking about a move to a new company in the new year, we're going to talk about that and so much more today. When we aren't on air, make sure to follow us at the Duncan Duo uh, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, all of them at The Duncan Duo. And we would love to keep pushing out real estate content to keep you updated on what is going on in the real estate market in 2024. So, Robert, I want to start out of the gate today. We we had um, a nice little surge in the market is happening because of interest rates. So a lot of people don't understand or that maybe aren't paying attention that um, the Fed has you know, come out with some announcements and mortgage rates have dropped down to where we're starting to see 30-year fixed mortgages approach in the fives, high fives, but, but some people are getting mortgages in the fives, a lot of in the sixes, um, where we were at in the eights you know, just a few months ago. So talk to uh, our audience about what you're seeing in the market and what that caused Despite December usually being, it's usually a busy month for closings, but not as much of a month for activity and offers. And we're seeing uh, that trend, which is probably a good start to 2024, start to see some positive movement there. Yeah, you know, usually this time of year, we really, really see a slowdown with properties going under contract. So November usually sees a big surge. People want to close by the end of the year. You know, people want to get in their new homes. People want to take tax advantage. But December, it's usually a time where people kind of sit on the sidelines. You know, they're busy with the holidays. They're doing Christmas. They're doing New Year's. They're doing all that stuff. Real estate kind of takes a back seat. They know they're probably not going to close by the end of the year. But what we've really saw this year, um, you know, just in the past week, for example, we've put nine properties under contract. Now, yeah, there's plenty of weeks during the year where we do that anyway. But to do that in December on the week of Christmas is really rare. I don't, I can't recall a time where we've ever done that. I always tell our agents, hey, what's great about this week is you take the time off because everybody else is off too. Kind of rare in the real estate world. But this year, it's been very busy and we never really see that. And I know that that comes from rates. And yeah, there's no question. The the A year ago, the rate was around what it is now. So it went up pretty heavily in 2023, um, and now it's kind of dropped back down to early 2023 levels. And there are a lot of people expected to see those rates continue to ease um, to where we're going to see them in the fives this year. Now, are we going to get back to the 2% interest rates this year? No, that's just not realistic. Could happen at some point in the future, uh, you know, possibly. But but where we are today, um, it is it is heading in the direction of, uh, especially with low inventory, of a of a of a pickup in 2024 compared to 2023 because that will knock people off the fence and this is what a lot of people don't understand about how rates impact because you know I'll have people say well I'm cash I don't care about the rates or they'll say I have a three million dollar house and look we love selling multi million dollar properties we've got one coming on the market in South Tampa uh, shortly under two million we've got a two million dollar estate uh, coming on the market in Lakeland so we work with a lot of high end clients too and in that crowd you're right a lot of people are not getting mortgages that are buying two and three and five million dollar properties however the people that the domino effect that caused that transaction to happen do get mortgages and here's what i mean most of our audience that buys a eight hundred thousand dollar house sold a 400 most of our people that sell an 800 buy a 1.2 there's a there's a ladder effect that happens and and what happens when you have higher interest rates the transactions that get hurt are the everyday average home buyers buying three four five six hundred thousand dollar houses believe it or not six hundred thousand is not that far off from our average today with with what prices have done in Tampa Bay. So what happens when the rates are high? Those people don't transact. Those sellers who who are you know maybe have some money but but have an income and a and a need a mortgage at a certain number decide not to sell because they don't want to go out and buy at eight percent. And those buyers can't a lot of it shrinks the buyer pool and they can't qualify. As those rates drop. Not only does it increase the number of buyers that can afford and qualify for a four hundred thousand dollar house, so the next person, so that seller can go out and buy an eight hundred, and so that person can go out and buy a one point two to eventually get to a three million dollar transaction, but 
the sellers that are sitting on the fence saying, I'm not going to give up my three or 4% mortgage for an eight. Um, they will for a five, some of them. It will knock the, some of them off the fence. So what we're seeing is a domino effect where it's really going to affect the whole market. So if you're a luxury home seller out there and you're saying, oh, this doesn't affect me at all, you're actually wrong because that that trickle effect of those entry-level transactions, those move-ups to those move-ups to luxury, uh, to the super luxury, there, there's a domino effect that those earlier transactions in that chain don't happen. Then the person never gets to the point of saying, "I'm going to move from my one million to my three million, and your home doesn't sell. So it it is a a positive impact across the board for our real estate market when you see interest rates soften like this. And and I think the expectation and all of the, you know, I saw Lawrence Yoon from the National Association of Realtors came out, and you know, all the expectations are that. Uh, interest rates are going to continue to soften in 2024, which I think is a really good sign for an improvement in prices and in the total number of sales in Tampa Bay from 2023 to 2024. Yeah. And I mean, you know, there's a bunch of people in the market right now that are what they call accidental landlords. You know, they maybe are even renting a property, but mm -hmm. keeping that primary residence that they own because they just can't part with that two or 3% interest rate. These people, by the time interest rates come down, they've also they're also going to have been stuck in this situation for a year or two years where they own this property that they probably really don't want to own. They just can't part with it. That's going to thaw the market. You know, there's all these studies that say by the National Association of Realtors that if interest rates can get to about five and a half, that is really going to thaw the market. And I think that's what we're going to see. I agree with you. I think that if rates can come down into the mid fives, we're going to see a lot of these accidental landlords or people that maybe they just don't want to give up that interest rate, but they're still in that house, they're going to do it. You know, I have some friends that are accidental landlords. And <laughs> it's funny because at one point I owned a lot of rental property and and I don't, uh, I don't anymore. Um, but at one point I did. And what a lot of people that become accidental landlord, landlords don't realize is that they now have another job. And their job is that uh, they're at the beck and call of the tenant. Whether they realize it or not, they may not think that they are, um, but when the toilet goes out or the AC goes out or there's a roof leak, it can be a constant inconvenience for people. Uh, the other thing is, is a lot of people that are accidental landlords decide to Airbnb their property. There have been a lot of a lot more government regulations. Local cities and counties have passed ordinances and laws to strike down or make it harder to Airbnb. Even HOAs are making it more challenging. So. Um, and in addition to that, I think there's been a move away from people doing Airbnbs. Myself, I call it Air Fee and Fee because every time I go stay at one, it's a whole laundry list of, of fees, extra fees that they tack on. I didn't take the trash out. That's $49. And so there are certainly parts of the country that are thriving with Airbnbs, but I think Tampa is oversaturated. We had this huge surge where people said, oh, let's just make it an Airbnb. And then they didn't realize how many times they'd have somebody not take care of something or break something. And you know when the vacancy numbers change, and there's not as many people staying in those, and the amount of money they make drops, it makes it a lot less likely for them to want to keep doing that when they have a chunk of equity if if rates drop. So I think you are, I think if you're a landlord out there and you're not enjoying uh, being an Airbnb host or owning rental property in Tampa Bay, this may be the year that you look at uh, selling off some inventory. We would love to help you with that. You can go to our website at dunkinduo.com and get eight. You can punch in every address you own. You, you know, there's a little home valuation tool. And our tool that allows you to value your property basically uses a blended data from all the sources. So every website that you go to uses their own data. Well, the service that we use blends all of that together to come up with a, a home value that we also, with a human element, can update. One of the benefits of using our valuation tool at DuncanDuo.com is that you can also interact with a human. One of our agents is going to reach out to you and say, hey, uh, what is you know what is right or wrong about this data or this value? What does your home have that maybe data doesn't collect? Like what features or upgrades or do you have a new roof? There's some adjustments we can make from a human element to that so you can get a more accurate value than a computer or an algorithm can come up with. And so you know for people out there that are not happy with the return on investment that they're now getting is, Fewer and fewer people in Tampa. Tampa is one of the, I think, top 10. I saw it. It was one of the top 10 hottest Airbnb markets in like 2020 and 2021. And now it's one of the worst simply because we've had an increase in the number of hotels. Um, there's been a, a move away because of some of the fee structures. Um, and then thirdly, because of the number of people 
that decided to become accidental landlords and flooded the market with Airbnbs. And now it's oversaturated. So I definitely think they're, like you said, Robert, there are definitely a, a crowd of people that are going to decide, you know what, I've got 100,000 or 200,000 or 300,000 in equity. And, you know, my, my you know, it's, it's been good being a landlord, but I'd rather cash out versus making my little bit of cash flow. I'd rather take my profit. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you know, speaking of Airbnb, I mean, I own three of them. They're not in this market. However, I will tell you that I have worked with a lot of sellers and agents on our team that have worked with sellers that are now on the fence about selling their Airbnb or their short-term rental. They've come to me. We've discussed it. I've ran a bunch of numbers for them. I can definitely do that for any seller that's out there. I use a lot of programs. And I will tell you that um, it has reached a point, especially locally, where I would seriously consider selling those properties. Yeah. I think the market is oversaturated with them locally. Um, you know, give us a call. I'd love to talk and to here, you about that. And here's that. what I would tell you: like your Airbnbs are in a market that's going to keep doing incredibly well. It's a well, it's a, it's it's a, a different, completely different yeah, market, totally different. right? And so the difference here is in this in a big populated market with all the hotels and. No, no, with with that being said, you had so many people do it that what I would tell you is if you like the Airbnb game and you're not making the returns you want in Tampa, then sell your Tampa assets and 1031 them into Something Airbnbs else. in a different part of the country that are going to provide a better return for you because Tampa is just too saturated with them now. So anyway, you're listening to the Duncan Duo Real Estate Show. We're going to be back. We're going to talk about our real estate career night coming up. If you are thinking about changing real estate companies, we'd love to talk to you about our team. We'd love to talk to you about LPT Realty. Um, we're going to talk about that. If you're struggling or if you're thinking about getting into real estate, a lot of people say, oh, the real estate market, maybe now isn't the right time. And I think it's always the right time if you have the right work ethic and the right mindset to get into real estate sales. Now, is it sunshine and rainbows? Is it going to be easy? No, but there are plenty of people that are coming into the business right now with the right fundamentals and the right work ethic that are going to thrive because of all of the um, disruption that's happening right now. So we'll be back. We're going to continue this conversation after a quick break here on the Duncan Duo Real Estate Show. So we're back here on the Duncan Duo Show talking about the Tampa Bay real estate market. I am Andrew Duncan, joined by the president of the Duncan Duo team, Robert Johnson. Uh, we are with LPT Realty. So excited and honored to be with LPT, a groundbreaking, fastest growing real estate brokerage in the in the nation. Um, their growth is just the trajectory of what they're doing with, you know, revenue share and stock options and and the marketing tools. Um, you know, I, I have so many friends from across the country that are reaching out to me right now that run large teams or that are other companies. And this really is a disruptive model. If it's something you're interested in, uh, hit me up on any of my socials, uh, Andrew Duncan or at the Andrew Duncan on Instagram. You can look me up. I've got the little blue check mark, pretty easy to find um, on any of the socials. And if you're thinking about a career change, you can also go to jointheduo.com. You can set up a career consultation with me if you're thinking about a change. Uh, there's a link on that page again at jointheduo.com. You can also register for our career night. Um, you know, again, there are a lot of people I think changing right now, and there are a lot of companies kind of in retreat mode. There's so much change happening in real estate advertising right now. And, you know, I want to reassert our desire to continue to market and generate leads. But one of the things I think that a lot of real estate agents fail to understand about a model like ours that we teach you if you come to our career night, get our next one. You can register for it. Join the duo.com. Our next one is January 9th. We do it every month. And on join the duo.com, you can apply for any of our open positions or you can register for a confidential career consultation. But one of the things we talk about that a lot of real estate agents fail at is how important a database is and how important seasoned leads are. Real estate agents a lot of times think of leads, they almost get addicted to leads like, like a crack addict. They're like, I want leads, 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 leads. New leads are the worst converting leads that exist. Our best converting leads and the best value proposition that we have to aid to agents to join us, and Robert, you can speak to this too, um, is the database of 150,000 plus people that we have that we can monitor their activity. People that have worked with us three and four times that we continue to communicate with that come back and say, hey, I'm ready to buy, and they raise their hand. Those are people that are coming back to us because they're experienced with us, because of our reputation, um, or, or simply because we've continued to stay in touch with them when other agents have failed. 
but we have this enormous database that um, you know, that's really one of the most valuable things that real estate agents joining our team get access to. Yeah, and I want to talk a little inside baseball about that. You know, we have 144,000 leads in our system. Uh, those are leads that are not, uh, we didn't, you know, cold call those leads. Those are real leads that actually came to us that we are incubating, that we are talking to all the time. Okay. Little story. We had three agents that joined our team uh, in October. And I took out of those 144,000, I gave them 100 leads to practice on. You know, hey, you know, we're not really, you know, we have, we're keeping in touch with these people. We're not calling them all the time. We're not checking in all the time. Well, the average amount of time that a buyer lead takes to actually convert into business is about 14 months if yep. it comes in brand new. Yep. So a lot of these leads that we've been incubating for a year are now ready to buy, especially with interest rates having come down. So those three agents called leads that were just in our system. They did not cold call them. They were stuff we were incubating. Yeah, and like and, the the leads triggered a call. They correct. they looked at a property or they favorited something or they 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 basically their activity on our website that we get to track triggered us correct. saying they're interested now. These leads were so active. All three hundred of these leads were active in the past day. That's how active that a lot of leads in our system are. Out of those leads. We've closed four properties from yeah, those Yeah, so those already. are not brand new leads. Nope. And that's what real estate agents getting into the business right now don't understand. They're like, oh, I'm going to go sign up for leads on Realtor.com or Zillow or whatever. Well, you're not going to make money on those for 14 months. And the average real estate agent ain't going to make it 14 months. 87% fail rate. They're not going to make it to the time those those things transact, which is why joining a team like ours is so important because we have leads that we're incubating. They're ready to transact from day one. We will, we will let you jump onto those leads immediately, whereas- so we have incubated these 144,000 leads, and we can do with science and math and, and our tracking, we can see here leads are ready to transact. You just need to call them and touch them and stay in touch with them. And different than you going somewhere that's just saying, hey, we're giving you brand new leads. So we have multiple tools and systems that incubate and follow up and stay in touch with all these people that regenerate them back into business for us that our agents get the opportunity to work. And that's the differentiator for someone like us that's been around for almost 20 years is we have this enormous database that we continue to incubate. And if you're going somewhere that doesn't have that that, that business acumen or that long-term viable strategy, all they're doing is buying leads that are 14 months out. So you're simply going to fail in those environments. And it's why there's so much turnover happening right now. There's why there's so much stigma when I hear like, oh, I'm going to join a team, but are you really joining a team because they joined, they started six months ago? They don't have a database. They don't have 144,000 people to talk to. They don't have millions of people they touch with radio, TV, billboards. So those are the things you get when you come to a team like ours. And if, if you're out there struggling and not doing the transactions you want, we're not going to be the highest split company. But we are going to be the highest agent income earning company because of all the tools, the resources, if you do the work. There is, I'm, I'm confident in saying this, there is no team out there, period, okay, where, and this is a testament to Andrew and his marketing, okay, there's no team out there that you are going to join where the team leader doesn't scrub the leads and take what they want. Andrew generates these leads our company generates these leads and they go directly to our agents. Yeah, I'm not showing how I haven't shown homes. I mean, I'll do my own personal transactions and I'll help an agent when there's some super high end or celebrity type transaction, but I always have an agent working it with me at the same split that they'd get if I didn't get involved. But on some of the higher end stuff, then of course it, it necessitates my involvement. But that's the agent raising their hand and saying, Hey, Andrew, help me out with this. It's not leads coming to me. I just, that's just not what I do anymore. So anyway, we're going to talk more about that. We're going to talk. Um, about so much more, but if you are an agent thinking about a change, join the duo.com, apply for one of our open positions, come to our career night where we'll teach you so much more, or, or send me a DM on social media if you're interested in a career change. We'll be back after a quick break here on the Duncan Duo Show.
So we're back here on the Duncan Duo Show talking about the Tampa Bay real estate market. I'm Andrew Duncan, the Duncan Duo team, joined by Robert Johnson, president of my real estate team at LPT Realty. Um, I, you know, I'm super excited about a lot of the marketing tools that we get at LPT. And one of the things that I think is, you know, impactful about, you know, joining a company like LPT is the founder's focus on marketing. And so Robert Palmer, the company's founder, and this is pro- his vision is probably what convinced me to, to move our, you know, one of the top real estate teams in the country over to LPT Realty. And it's really a kind of a, a vision of leverage and using the collaborative resources of all these people to, uh, buy, you know, kind of bind together and build community, but also to use leverage and marketing. And one of the things that we have the access to do right now for our home sellers is Zillow Showcase. And Zillow Showcase basically allows our properties to get extra exposure on Zillow. You get a higher end photography, videography, you get put at the top of Zillow. Um, and it's and it's a cool thing that he's providing for agents right now that gives us extra exposure opportunity for our sellers that if you're not playing in that game, and he plays, you know, he spends, you know, millions and millions of dollars with Zillow to get our listings in front of more consumers. And that's where consumers' eyes are today. And so while I think that um Zillow is going to have some problems in the next few years, you know, with with some of the FTC rulings, with some of the lawsuits, generating buyer leads. I think they're they're transitioning and pivoting and saying we need to do more for agents when it comes to home sellers, and this is a product that they are using to get listings in front of more consumers. Yeah, I mean, what's great about Zillow Listing Showcase is it's actually you know it's the buzzword. It's actually a lot of AI. You know, it's taking a lot of different patterns that they see through their huge amount of data gathering, and it actually drives consumers to certain listings based on that data. And these listings are basically the Zillow showcase listings. And it drives more traffic. It puts the properties in a better light. It creates... um, you know, it creates an opportunity for sellers and agents to get their listings in front of more people. And real estate's a numbers game. So the more eyes that it gets on the property, the like the higher likelihood it's actually going to sell and get more money. And that's what they're doing now. And here's what the consumer doesn't know. So if an agent, you're hiring an agent to sell your house, and if an agent doesn't have access to this tool, there is a very good chance the inquiries on your property are off of Zillow. Are sold to another agent. Well, the the chance is actually a hundred percent, unless that agent they're buys correct. the zip codes, right? So, so there, so there is a chance that the listing agent gets the lead, but it's but it's minimal, right? So the reality is, without this program, what you're basically doing is you're hiring someone to sell your property, be your advocate, and then these third party lead aggregator services are saying, "We want to monetize this, so we're not going to give your inquiry to the person that knows the most about it. We're going to give your inquiry to the highest bidder." So what consumers don't know is if if an agent isn't on showcase like we are, those inquiries are going to somebody else. Meaning that you're likely, you know, that person doesn't have an advocacy for your home. They have an advocacy for selling that person a home, but not necessarily yours. Whereas, you know, the ability that we have to communicate directly with that person on our team, the team that has the most knowledge about the property and has the highest vested interest in getting it sold and made a commitment to you sitting at your dining room table or your living room table to say, hey, we're going to get your house sold. We want those opportunities. We want those leads because we think we can do it better. Yeah. And what's great about Listing Showcase also, which what I didn't mention earlier, is actually you know, when a consumer goes to Zillow or Realtor.com or a lot of these other internet services, again, those inquiries to that property are sold to the highest bidder. Usually, it's not the listing agent, okay? However, what's great about Listing Showcase is that the listing agent info is thrown out there in front of the consumer, almost hyper thrown out there. You know, they want to get that info in front of the consumer. They want those consumers to be able to call the listing agent, talk to the listing agent, get all that answered. It's really where Zillow is partnering again, like they used to in the old days, with the listing agent in order to get this property sold. And I think that that is a huge benefit because it's not only what consumers expect, it's what consumers want. They want the listing agent to the property. Yeah. And that is going to result in them getting more money. Well, and and not only do they want the listing agent, but there's people that are concerned about privacy. There's people that are concerned about following instructions. There's 
People are concerned about pre-qualification, all, all of these things. And look, we know where the eyes are. We know that that is a huge format where people go and where they search. And that opportunity for us to use that tool to drive more traction for our listings um, is, is enormously effective. And so that is something LPT is negotiating with Zillow ongoing to give LPT agents not only showcase, but at a better price than they could get on their own. So again, another way that LPT is using leverage to help agents grow. Um, if you are thinking about a career change, again, hit us up at jointheduo.com. We'd love to talk to you, even if you're not interested in my team. That that was one of the reasons I I, I made the move to LPT was because I felt like over the years, I would have agents that work for my team for two or three years and then decide they wanted to run their own business. Or I would have people that wanted to learn from me, but couldn't uh, but didn't want to join the brokerage I used to be be at. LPT has this way where you can sponsor people, where you can continue to add value for them, even if they're not necessarily on your team or you're generating, you know, generating leads for them, where you can learn from what I've built. You know, I'm building out these little mini mastermind groups, uh, you know, weekly and, and monthly Zoom calls with people that come into LPT that are not part of my team. They're just simply people that I I sponsor into LPT where I can bring them value and add value to LPT Realty with the experience that I have of team building. So if you're someone that has, you know, that has run a business or been a real estate agent or you're listening to this and you run a team and you've kind of watched what I've done through the years and you want to learn more about it, but you know, up until now, I wasn't really likely to open up the tool chest and show you and teach you much, right? Because there wasn't really a vested interest for me. But now with my focus on helping LPT Realty grow, if you're someone locally that's thinking about a brokerage change and you bring your team over or you come over as an agent, you're going to have access to tools and materials and resources where we're going to help you grow there too. So um, that that's a big thing for me, a big part of my vision for uh, 2024 and beyond is the ability to have impact on um, on more people, the ability to impact more real estate agents and help more real estate agents that want to plug in and grow. Because not everybody wants to be on a team and not everybody is the right agent for a team. And there are some people who have a higher lid or want to do their own business, um, you know, and, and those are people that we can now help with this model that we couldn't help before. And Robert, you even, we have people that come into our, our business and apply online to join our team and there's sometimes where you sit down with them and you say, look, you're probably not the right agent for our team, but you should definitely look at LPT. Yeah. You know, there's so many people that we've interviewed over the years that they're just, you know, you talk to them and they want to do business, but you know, they're just not a team agent. You just know it. And they kind of know it too, but they want to learn from you. They want to learn from us. They want to take that and they want to be able to, you know, take what they're doing and kind of learn from somebody and grow. And you know, hey, if they join the team, they're going to be gone in a year. And this gives them the opportunity to start building that with us from the right. beginning. Or, or they say, you know what, I'm joining a team, but I only want to do this for a year. And then I want to then I want to grow and kind of mimic. Maybe I don't want to get to the size of the Dunkin' Duo team, but I'd like to have my own five-person team. We now have a path to do that for them. We have an extra career path. Whereas before, we had you know buyer specialist listing specialist. Then you have senior buyer specialist, senior listing specialist. You had like some director and leadership opportunities and you have acquisitions. After that, in our prior model, we didn't have a solution for someone that wanted to go higher and higher, that maybe wanted to grow a 20 person team. We didn't have a solution for them. Now we do. And it's super exciting for me because, you know, we've had plenty of people that have worked for us. Uh, we've already had people that work for us in our prior model come back. Because they wanted to run their own business, but they loved being in business with us. They loved, you know, what we represented. And so it gives us an opportunity to reach back out to people that used to work for us that are now running their own business, but they want to still learn from us. But they don't want to be a team agent, right? They don't want the structure and the accountability. They want to kind of run their own thing. And so it's it's really cool because for me, it's it's the conversations I get to have, and I'm having them every single day with agents all over the country as this company grows. Um, it, it's really cool because you you have people that are that, that really want to do the work and, and unfortunately 2023 for me was a challenging year because of how many people I've realized don't really want to be successful in real estate they don't want to do the work to be successful in real estate they want to they want people to think they're successful in real estate they want to be in real estate because they want people to think they're doing well but they don't really want to do the work and I'm not saying that to everybody but I think after the pandemic, and certainly the kind of a slowdown in the real estate market, 
you saw more and more people get in because of what their friend posted on Instagram two or three years ago, the fake success that they thought their friend was having when their friend was doing tours of houses that they weren't actually selling, right. you know, and, and making people think they were doing all this business and they sold three homes. Uh, they made less than a Walmart greeter. So the the reality is, is that unfortunately, a lot of people that get into real estate don't really want to work and grind. I want to find more of those people, even if that doesn't necessarily mean they're on my team. But if they want to grow, I want to pour into them. And that's what this model helps allows me to do. And it's what I'm what I'm really excited and passionate about for 2024 is pouring into more people and adding value, even if they're not with the Duncan duo, but they want what LPT offers. And and I think it's groundbreaking. The 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 pre-IPO stock, the revenue share, the marketing tools, and then just the growth, being aligned with a company that is growing as fast as it is. Uh it's exciting for people. It's exciting to to watch. And I think that um there are a lot of people that are going to be surprised to see what LPT does in a year or two and where it's at in a year or two compared to where it is today. So if you want a piece of that, again, hit us up at jointheduo.com. Would love to talk to you. Um, you can also send me a DM if you follow me on any of the social channels at the Duncan Duo or at the Andrew Duncan. Send us a DM. We'd love to reach out and talk to you about that. When we aren't on air again, at the Duncan Duo, Twitter, Instagram, uh, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, uh, and at DuncanDuo.com for your most up to date, most accurate home value tool. Again, at DuncanDuo.com. It's super easy. You can pull off the side of the road. It auto-populates everything. You plug in your address. It pulls from Apple. It's super easy to fill out. Again, at DuncanDuo.com, get your free home value estimate. We'll reach out to you. We'll keep you updated on what's going on in your neighborhood, what's going on with your home value, as well as talk to you about our programs, which is your home sold guaranteed. Um, We can also give you an instant cash offer. Um, I've got multiple cash offers out there right now. Still have several million dollars to deploy into real estate. So if you're thinking about selling your home and you just want out and you want a cash offer, we'd love the opportunity to do that for you too. And you can do that at DuncanDuo.com. We'll be back, continue our conversation, wrapping up our last segment after a quick break here on the Duncan Duo Real Estate Show. So we're back here on the Duncan Duo Show talking about the Tampa Bay real estate market when we aren't on air at the Duncan Duo on all the social channels and DuncanDuo.com for a quick, free home value estimate. So, Robert, how was your holidays? Good? It was great. Went to grandma's house like usual. I ate a bunch of food. I took eight days off of social media. I haven't made a social media post, I think, for like a week and a half. Uh, Disconnected. Went to New York City. Got to see the tree. Uh, got to see Santa at Macy's, did some shopping, um, you know, got to see some friends. Ironically enough, I ended up in New York and found two friends of mine that were in New York City at the same time. So I got to meet up with them. But I did kind of a social media fast, which was super good for me. Um, you, so needed I, you needed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I needed a break. And and so I still need another one, but that's that's we'll we'll get to that. So the the reality is is that um, you know sometimes social media can be so like overwhelming because I just feel like it's so fake. Like there's so many bots, there's so many fake people, there's so many people out there putting stuff out there that you know like that isn't something they're really like passionate about. It's just something they want people to think they I don't know. It's just it's just fake, right? So I just needed a I needed a purge, um, which was good. But as I'm moving into 2024, this is a week when I kind of step aside, put some time away, and I'll do that this week um, where I start to you know, carve out goals for myself and kind of things that I want to focus on. And you know, I talked about it in the break. One of my goals is, is helping more agents realize the value proposition of LPT before it's too late, before the early adopter benefits go away in, in, at the end of January and before um, you know, the company skyrockets and then some of the early adopter benefits aren't as good or before it grows to the point where now you join and it's not as easy to recruit people to join. And so so many other things why the value proposition right now makes sense. Um, but the other thing for me um, that I realized this year is I didn't I didn't take uh, enough vacations. That's my, my resolution. I took 
um, a week this past week, and then I took a week to Spain, and that was it. And I have a coach that I've had forever, and the, that coach had always told me I needed five to six weeks of vacation a year at this point in my career mm-hmm. to kind of replenish myself, to get me, to, you know, just to, to to rejuvenate. And I didn't do enough of that this year. So I think next year for me, because when I do take that time away, I think it, it kind of reinvigorates my spirit a little bit. But it also allows my creative mind to think of ideas and come up with stuff that I can't do when I'm in the trenches, you know, working every day. So for me, next year is a year that I want to take I want to take uh, some more time off. And in our business, um, you know, obviously I want to I want I want to grow and I want more, um, you know, I want to find more people that want to grind and do the work, you know. Yeah, I would tell you that, um, <clears throat> you know, my biggest resolution for business next year is similar i'm not the vacation part but yeah. actually the growing part hiring the right people that yeah. want to come on and not just and this sounds bad but not just grow the team to grow grow the team in the right way from the yeah. ground up yeah and get those people that man you want to grind with every day right and you want to work with every day who have the same goals as you because i think for a while, because of the way the market was, we almost had to get away from that because yeah. we just we, we needed to service the market the yeah. way that it was. And now we have the opportunity to refocus and bring people on in the capacity that they should, like you talked about with LPT, yeah. giving them different choices, bringing them on board, but also focusing on the team and growing right. it the and right if, way. And if they're not a team agent, then, yes. then we can still help them with LPT. But we're not necessarily going to pour into them because they're not going to want to do the work. They're going to show up once or twice a month and do a handful of deals a year. And that's perfectly great. Look, there's there's a market out there. The LPT has an option for every agent. I mean, to have a hundred percent plan with a five thousand dollar, you know, five hundred dollar transaction, five thousand dollar cap. So there's a model for every agent. Even if an agent only wants to do a handful of deals a year, we still want to help you, you know. And right. but but there are others that say, Hey, I want to do thirty or forty, I want to make two hundred grand. Um, you know, I want to do this. I want to do that. And those are agents that we're going to deploy more resources to. It isn't as if we aren't going to give the agents that are only going to do a handful of deals resources, but we're going to give the agents that want more opportunity and they're going to show up every day at the office, do the prospecting, do the grinding, do the calling, do the texting. If they're going to put in the work, then they have an incredible opportunity to, to grow. Um, but every person that gets into real estate has a different goal. Every time I hear someone say, oh, I'm getting into real estate for freedom. So, well, you're going to be broke then. You know, Absolutely, you're going to be broke. If you're getting in for freedom, you're going to be broke because you're just going to play fop lead all the time. You're not going to do the work. If you're getting in because you want to, you know, eventually maybe have freedom. Okay, I get that, right? But if you want freedom from the jump, it's the wrong career, dude. But you need to go do something else. They're truly. This sounds bad, but they're really, as you know, if if you want to be successful, there really isn't a lot of freedom because it's kind of like we talked about with accidental landlords. Yeah, you are tethered to the business, but. It has to be something you love right. because you have to work Correct. a lot. Because yeah. to be successful in this business, be it's required. Yeah, you've got to be on call. You got to be working all the time. I mean, I'm I'm in it 20 years, and I just told you I took two weeks of vacation. Okay, so freedom. Now, look, do I am I wealthy? Do I have more money than I ever thought I'd have? Do I have cool cars and live in an amazing house? Of course, but my name's on the door, and I have a passion about it. So I have a certain level of expectation of what I want to happen, and so I think that. The reality is, is that freedom um, can happen. And again, maybe your goals aren't as aspirational as mine, but money and time do coexist. You know, you can certainly have less of the money and more of the time. It's just a matter of what your passions are. But freedom isn't something you're going to have if if you're going to be super successful. Yeah. You know, it, it just it just doesn't work that way. It doesn't mean you can't leverage yourself. It doesn't mean you can't buy your time back. But freedom, like early, just doesn't happen. Years down the line, you grind and you get to that point. Okay, yes. But if you walk in from day one and that's your goal, you're gonna fail. If you walk in and say, "Hey, I want to have freedom in seven years," okay, that we can make that happen. Yep. You know. So it, again, if you're thinking about following us on social media at the Duncan Duo, go to jointheduo.com. If you're looking for our career night or to apply for one of our open positions. And uh, follow us at the Duncan Duo on all of our socials. And thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you have an awesome New Year's. Hope you enjoy tonight. Hope you don't get too many drinks. Don't drink and drive. <laughs> Go home to your family safe and sound. And uh, have an awesome and happy New Year's.